Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Imagine a convoy of heavily armored vehicles facing the formidable natural challenge of crossing a river. While this seems insurmountable, the United States Army stands undeterred and has managed to overcome it ingeniously. Today's episode is focused on the groundbreaking inventions they found to cross rivers in style. In military history, wet gap crossing events have gained attention for their ability to transform a natural barrier into a strategic gateway. During the Second World War, the rivers in Europe such as the Meuse, Moselle, and Rhine became key hurdles for the Allied powers. Despite its challenging nature, the U.S. Army managed to cross the Moselle River, which had a width of 300 feet, and seize Nancy in France. More likely, Crossing the Rhine River was a ticket back home for the Allies, as it was the last major natural obstacle in Germany. These river crossings stood out as critical junctures during the final push towards Germany. Unlike crossing a dry gap, in a wet gap crossing, the convoy on the bridge becomes a sitting duck for the enemy as they are exposed without cover. To counter that threat, a bridgehead is built on the far side of the wet gap. This provides protection for the crossing forces and a staging area for further deployment of forces. To begin crossing the river, the bridgehead force assaults across the river and secures a foothold with an adequate defensive perimeter. Then, the foothold is fortified into a bridgehead, and engineers erect a bridge spanning the wet gap. Once the bridge is in place, the far side is reinforced with artillery, armored vehicles, and breakout forces that are used for attacking beyond the bridgehead perimeter. While wet gap crossing is a combined arms operation, multi-role bridge companies are the linchpins of the operations. Their ability to erect temporary and semi-permanent bridges remains vital in military operations. Unlike a hasty river crossing that requires fewer resources, a deliberate crossing may require building a bridge across the gap. As the name implies, a multi-role bridge company caters to multifaceted demands during a wet gap crossing. In certain scenarios, the engineer should create a temporary or semi-permanent bridge to cross the gap. When this method is not feasible, the engineers opt for a floating bridge or a raft bridge. Conditions such as the river width bank condition and enemy resistance are decisive factors when selecting the right gap crossing method. Erecting a bridge is no easy task. The M30 bridge erection boats, or BEBs, are the ultimate workhorse when it comes to establishing floating bridges and rafting operations. These boats can literally reach any location as they are transported via road, air, and sea. The boat takes the common bridge transporter 
when it is transported via land. The M30 Veb is an aluminum hulled boat powered by two diesel engines. These engines drive the water jet propulsion system that drives the boat. This allows the boats to operate at shallow depths and in water with higher particulate matter. In addition, the boat inherits impressive maneuverability as it can move forward, backward, and sideways. With this ability, the boat stands as the staple piece of equipment for deploying ribbon bridges. The improved ribbon bridge, or ERB, is the newest version of ribbon bridges that could act as a floating bridge or a raft to ferry vehicles. The building block of an ERB is a modular bay. Interior bay units are taken together and connected to two ramp bays at either end. A ramp bay can reach banks at a height of two meters. They are transported on land by a common bridge transporter or a palletized load system truck. The folding and unfolding mechanism unfolds the module when released into the water. Once a bay unit is in the water, bridge erection boats capture the bay by ropes and place them to build the bridge. Even though these bridges are engineered to support substantial weight, their limits are often tested when behemoths like the M1 Abrams tanks wants to roll across the bridge. The engineers at the U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center take on the challenge of testing and evaluating the load-bearing ability of herbs under heavy loads. They use a small-scale prototype of the M1 Abrams on a scale herb to identify the hydrodynamic forces. Later, the data is correlated to real-world applications to make the required improvements. As a result of comprehensive tests, FD armored vehicles were able to utilize floating bridges to successfully maneuver across challenging water barriers. An improved ribbon bridge is certified for a military load capacity of up to 80 for wheeled vehicles and 96 for tracked vehicles. This impressive load carrying capability allows the bridge to host all NATO main battle tanks, including the M1A2 Abrams and other heavy vehicles such as the armored vehicle launched bridge. Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge, or AVLB, plays a pivotal role in maintaining the momentum of troops under diverse battlefield conditions. The M60 AVLB got its name as it uses the same chassis as the M60 tank. The hull is fitted with a launcher that is attached to the bridge. The scissor type bridge is 60 feet long and can be quickly deployed and retrieved via hydraulic actuators. The bridge is folded and placed on top of the hull. Placing the bridge is a task that takes only a few minutes and the retrieval can be done from either end. To deploy the bridge, the vehicle is placed at one bank and the overhead cylinder in the launcher section is extended. This shifts the bridge vertically and places the rectangular outrigger on the ground. Besides facilitating rapid mobility across gaps, 
Military engineers are tasked with the exhilarating yet frightening duty of counter-mobility missions. Within counter-mobility missions, bridge demolition plays a crucial role as it offers a tactical advantage by controlling the movement of enemy forces. The Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers of the British Army treat bridge demolition skills with great importance. During the exercise Prairie Storm 4, they demolished a bridge with 9 kilograms of plastic explosives. Plastic explosives have gained popularity due to their pliable nature and stability. Composition C4 is a well-known plastic explosive. It offers excellent water resistance and a detonation velocity of around 26,000 feet per second. For bridge demolition, C4 and sheet explosives are the most proven, as they are extremely good at piercing steel. The explosive charge is placed at the steel beam of a bridge, as collapsing these primary load-bearing structures can infringe heavy damages. Like the Royal Engineers, the EFP battle groups, or Enhanced Forward Presence Battle Groups of NATO, are also in continuous pursuit of improving their bridge demolition techniques. These multinational military units conduct training exercises for deterrence and combat readiness, including bridge demolitions. Neutralizing counter-mobility threats is just as crucial as implementing rapid mobility measures. To get this done, armies must look no further than the M1150 Assault Breacher Vehicle. This alien-looking behemoth is packed with impressive features that make tearing through enemy minefields and obstacles a cakewalk. The M1150 uses the M1A1 Abrams chassis with a high-lift adapter at the front that can be fitted with either a full-width mine plow or combat dozer blades. The mine plow clears a pathway of 15 feet, allowing passage for other traffic. One of the most exciting features of the Breacher is its two mine clearing line charges. This long, explosive charge cord is stuffed with 700 C4 blocks and launched by a towing rocket motor. Once detonated, it clears a pathway that is 350 feet long and 46 feet wide. These linear demolition charges play a key role as a proven mine clearing system. Apart from being launched by an assault breacher, they are also launched by amphibious assault vehicles and trailers with the help of a rocket motor or a hydraulic launcher. The close-in breacher capabilities offered by this method ensure the safe and swift passage of the forces. In modern warfare, either mobility or counter-mobility measures cannot be overlooked. Both are interdependent facets, and deficiencies in one can undermine the overall effectiveness and turn the tables on a mission. This balance is maintained by the meticulous selection of the fleet, which caters to every requirement that could arise in a battle situation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.